Hello. Today we're going to look at the basic introduction to quantum mechanics. In my video on the reason for quantum mechanics, I explained that light, which had always been thought of as a wave, could also be regarded as made up of particles, or photons. This led physicists to wonder whether particles might behave like waves, and in particular whether an electron in an atom could be regarded in this way. It turned out that this was the way of explaining why electrons do not spiral into the nucleus and annihilate the atom. In my video on the wave function, I showed why it was useful to choose a wave equation to describe the electron of the following form, psi equals e to the i kx, which also equals cosine kx plus i sine kx. K equals 2 pi over lambda, where lambda is the wavelength of the wave. P equals h, which is Planck's constant, over lambda. That's the de Broglie equation, which is set out in more detail in my video on reasons for quantum mechanics. So P equals k h bar, and h bar is h over 2 pi. You might wonder why we do not use a simpler wave function of the form psi equals cosine kx. The reason has to do with the uncertainty principle, or Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which I explain in more detail in another video, but which essentially says that you cannot measure the position of a particle and its momentum at the same time. This principle is often expressed as delta x delta p, which is the uncertainty in position multiplied by the uncertainty in momentum, is greater than or equal to h bar over 2. A postulate of quantum mechanics, which is one we will come to shortly, says that the probability of finding the electron at any given point in space is equal to the square of the wave function at that point. If we consider psi equals cosine kx, then since k equals p over h bar, psi equals cosine p over h bar times x. But this implies that we know both p and x, that's momentum and position, precisely. And Heisenberg's principle says that we cannot do that. If we know p precisely, then we cannot know x at all. This means that psi squared, which represents the probability of finding the electron at any point, must be a constant, since the probability will be the same for any point in space. But for psi equals cosine kx, psi squared is cosine squared kx, which is not a constant. So cosine kx cannot represent a wave function of the electron. But psi equals e to the i kx does the job nicely. But in order to show how, we first need to look at how we deal with complex numbers. We can plot the wave function on a complex plane. We plot the imaginary term along the vertical axis and the real term along the horizontal axis. e to the i kx equals cosine kx plus i sine kx. The sine kx term is the imaginary term and is plotted on the vertical axis. The cosine kx term is the real term and is plotted on the horizontal axis. The length of the vector, which is psi, since the length of psi is equal to cosine kx plus i sine kx, is such that psi squared represents our probability term for finding the electron at any given point. Psi squared can be found by Pythagoras. Psi squared equals cosine squared kx plus sine squared kx, and that equals 1. If we want the wave to have a different amplitude, we would need to use the term psi equals a times e to the i kx, then the absolute length of the psi vector would be a, and the probability would be a squared. 
This satisfies the condition that the probability is a constant and that we have no idea where the electron is if we know its momentum precisely. How can we get to this term mathematically? Squaring the wave function doesn't do it because if psi equals a e to the i k x then psi squared is a squared e to the i 2 k x which is certainly not a constant. But we can create a thing called a complex conjugate. The complex conjugate of any wave has the same real term but changes the sign of the imaginary term. So if psi equals a e to the i k x which equals a into cosine k x plus i sine k x then psi star equals a into cosine kx minus i sine kx, which can be written psi star equals a e to the minus i kx. And so we can see that psi psi star equals a e to the i kx multiplied by a e to the minus i kx, which since e to the i k x multiplied by e to the minus i k x is 1, is a squared, which is the constant we wanted. So for complex terms, the probability of finding an electron at a particular point is psi times psi star, in other words the wave function times its complex conjugate. Consider an electron orbiting a nucleus. Instead of thinking of this as a simple orbit, we now need to think of the electron behaving like a wave. It will be a standing wave, which means that as the electron orbits the nucleus, the value of the wave function at any point does not change. In other words, if the wave function has a particular value at this point, then after the electron has completed one further orbit, the value of the wave function will be the same. Let us suppose that the length of the orbit is L, which is essentially the circumference of the orbit. This is 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the orbit. This means that the wave function at any point x is e to the i k x. After the electron has travelled one full orbit, it will now be at position x plus l. The wave function will be e to the i k x plus l. But these two wave functions must be the same. So e to the i k x equals e to the i k x plus l, which is e to the i k x multiplied by e to the i k l. The e to the i k x term cancels out, leaving the requirement that e to the i k l equals 1. How can this be satisfied? It could be satisfied if k or l equals 0, but then the solution would be trivial. It can also be satisfied if k l equals 2 pi or any multiple of 2 pi. But L was 2 pi r. So k 2 pi r equals n 2 pi. But k equals p over h bar. So p times r is n h bar. p times r is angular momentum and that must come in discrete units of h bar since n must be a whole number. This is the first major consequence of quantum mechanics. Momentum and angular momentum are both quantized. They cannot just take on any value, they must be in discrete units of h bar. So when momentum changes, it must do so in step units of h bar. There is no such thing as continuous change in momentum. It is jerky. Since h-bar is about 10 to the minus 34, we don't see its effects in the world about us, but it's there all the same, and has a much greater impact in the world of the atom and the nucleus.